the Grand Finals of Dream League Season 22. Suns fan here. Cinderin. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they got you off oh. fast. That's good. So Falcons take game one. The panel feels more comfortable with the Bet Boom draft this time around. Yeah. What are your thoughts, young man? I'm just really surprised with the adjustments we saw between game one and two. Shadow Demon just got ignored first phase. You first picked the Gyro. Yeah. Um, you gave away Timber and seemingly needed to use reserve time to solve it. Like it was going to be a very obvious pick, I think, for Bet Boom. So interesting here for Falcons that. They change some things up and others remain the same. And of course, they're very comfortable with the gyro onto Skitter. He won three games in a row in the previous grand finals he placed on, played on this hero. So he's warmed up. But I think yep, the way to look at it. I think the the lineup that Bet Boom have against Falcons is actually I would say clearly favored if the Doom doesn't have a good game. I think Amar is going to be very important for Falcons here. I think you need to doom the Timber Saw over the Sven in most, if not all, fights. This is a mid Timber, so that a big part of the reason they picked the Gyro against this hero is that they've had success with it as an offlaner, uh, or rather, they've had success with Gyro as a counter to the offlane Timber. But Bet Boom immediately identified that this is what's going on. They ban two of the counters in mid, and they just commit to putting GPK there with the Huskar as well as Monkey King out of the picture. So. I think, I think Bet Boom did a pretty solid job here in the draft. Let's see if they've got the place to go with it this time. All right, I have a quick question. Do you think there's any heroes that are getting banned or first picked because now they're, you know, they're kind of flip-flopping between the two that are actually just overrated? Do you think that there's any heroes that at the beginning of the tournaments have been rated so highly and we just haven't seen that many games from them? Uh, okay, I'm not sure exactly what you... I feel like you asked two different questions. All right, yeah, answer both. Uh, now I forgot both of them. <laughs> All right, Try again. It. I don't know if it's just you and me casting, but the Timber Saws have looked kind of underwhelming, Cinderin. And this is okay, first so it was pick a loaded or first question. fan. I see. All, just all questions saw. are loaded. Is it possible that you hate the Timber Saw this game because it's played by Bet Boom, who you think <laughs> will get stomped? <laughs> no. <laughs> Absolutely not. I am as unbiased well, as they come. That sounded no, so of course not. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> no, why would you think that I'm biased at all? Ah! <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I personally don't think Timbersaw is overrated. I actually think this might be a... I think Mars was in a way overrated. Okay, actually. there you go. That's uh, an answer. And I mean, sure. we're getting to this stage of the tournament now where it's also not being given as much uh, attention nearly as it was a couple days ago. But I think largely it's because teams have come around to what the solutions are. And then Mars has just got... His games have just been too good, I think, uh, for what he deserved. Whereas the Timbersaw games, I think, have been a little bit more polarizing, I guess, is the one way to put it. But by putting it mid, uh, Bet Boom, they, did it. they ran it against Extreme with great success earlier. They're going to try to replicate that performance, and he's off to a great start against Malreen so far. 14 for 2 against 7-0 and 0 in that mid lane. Ooh. Yep, the classic Timber versus Melee matchup, the yeah. dream generally. Uh, but we'll see if Malreen well. is able to come back at all, because, I mean, like the panel we're talking about, he should be able to farm, and uh, eventually he'll be okay. But yep, GPK definitely off to a very good start. And on the other side, uh, we see, well, the Elder Titan becoming more and more popular as this tournament progresses. This is a, a TI-type hero, if you will. Yeah. It's the AOE control. And in combination with, like, the Torrent Storm, for example, being able to set things up could be pretty powerful in these team fights. Uh, but back to the Gyro. Yep. Your thoughts on this hero, because in this tournament, you talked about it, he picked it three times in a row in the last finals, but we haven't seen that much this tournament. I mean, we've barely... Wasn't wasn't changed. I feel like we've barely seen it in group stage two. I think it was mainly a group stage one hero. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, that, that one's puzzling to me as well, to be honest. Like, sure, I get the counter pick against Timber, but then they didn't ban Sven, who I think, in theory, should be one of the better heroes at going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Gyro. So it is, uh, that one is a bit a bit surprising for me. I, I don't really know what I think about it. I, I also don't know if they picked it as a flex, to be fair, right? This hero can absolutely be played as a support by both crit as well as snaking in particular. Uh, but they do commit it onto the carry position this game. Yep, and his build is uh, 
from what I remember, it's Crystallis into Ags, yeah. pretty much. With a value of Falcon Blade to go, right? Yeah. So Falcon Blade treads and then Crystallis Ags. Probably what he's going to go here as well. Save, taking some serious damage, will jump away. It's funny that they first picked Techies last game. Oh, is he getting him here? Uh, oh, okay, no. Sticks. That was a nice they, play, they though. They first picked Techies, and he just gets it second phase this time. <laughs> it's like, you know, they're trying to like create these like ban scenarios. Like, okay, now you got to force the ban surely on Techies, mm -hmm. but Falcons don't care, apparently. Still give it up. Yeah, and then they give the techies around. I'm like, okay, surely now they're going to pick Shadow Demon, right? Yeah. Like, this has been surely. a great play pick for them against techies. Nope. Let's go Rubik. Against Chakram, I guess? I mean, th there are some good Rubik's deals in this game, but this one also is a little bit of an... I, I, I would love to pick their brains about what the mindset is behind this pick as well. Like, Chakram is a good steal. Torrent Storm is obviously insane if you can get it, but... It's a big if. Yep, and for his save, he has to get a shard first, unlike Shadow Demon. So yeah, we'll see how it works out this time. I'm excited to see some... I mean, we have seen Rubik as a, even a, an offlane in this tournament. Oh, yeah. And see how Don't far think Prince is going to go Dagon. You never know. Homie Missile coming for Miero. Nice Torrent. Torrent will connect, though. Snake King still applying the pressure as... Uh, he had another blast, but wouldn't be enough to finish the job. It was five mana short from Frostbite. I think they might have actually tried to go for that kill with, with a bite, then Skitter could have connected. But Snake King going for double boots, it looks like. Better not misclick that as Malreen will be forced to TP back to base. Let's see how many creeps he ends up missing here. Not too many. That's yeah, a good time to, push to out go. The wave first. Yeah, and GPK still running the show mid. Six minute power rune is coming up as well, so. Nice creep, Amar. Well, bottom lane, though, that's first blood for Skeeter. As always been, as the blast off actually hits, but save will likely fall. Pops the fairy fire. Sticky bomb onto Skeeter is there, but is not enough for the kill. But he is really low. We'll eat one more tango and get the Lotus as well as GPK. Getting gone on a bit by Malreen. That's a six minute rune. Did spawn some nice damage onto the Timber Saw, but. I think very important for the outcome, the future outcome of this top lane is the creep Amar found. Um, he's got the ice armor from the ogre, and this means that the Sven and the Timbers, or sorry, the Sven and the Elder Titan will struggle to stick on him and do the damage. And in turn, it frees up crit a lot more on the Rubik. Amar will definitely be able to hold his own. He's got 15 armor and that slow, so effectively, he's just going to be bullying the Sven relentlessly. And if Et tries to help, I mean, what are they going to do to him? They, it's not like you can kill him, so this was the dream creep Amar found for this situation. Time for Wisdoms looks to be a one-for-one -one split. Save as well as crit. Crit will stack the Ancients for the Gyro for later. This is, this feels like this is the archetype game that's just going to be a lot about stacks. When one side has Sven and the other has Gyro, can either team make the invasive maneuver? Can they steal the stacks? Can they kill them when they're farming them? Or are both teams just going to be able to take them? Yeah will be a big deal. I guess if you're looking at it from a theoretical standpoint, which team is better at defending their their ancients, I think it's pretty even. On one side you have the ET, and on the other you have the Pango, who's amazing for fighting in that area. Gyro himself also offers a lot more in the way of defense than the Sven does. If his sec gets invaded, you'll have the call down to help with zone control. Up nice Brent from GPK gets bursted. There. GPK, nice combo. Rolling Thunder not actually going to come through from Alrein, just faking it out. Nice and easy. That's bottom lane. X. Big damage. Peter back to the other side. Again. The arrow He's getting gone on, but GPK makes an appearance. Rocket Barrage just ripping through him, though. Has to use his call down to try to get away, but GPK will likely have enough damage, and indeed he does. Ends up being the one for one. And that's one of the reasons that uh, the Gyrocopter is a hero that they like Oof. as the Echo Stomp comes through from Toronto, Tokyo into the TP. Nice play. Is fine. It's very close. But Gyro just being such a good laner. This is a one of the few carries in this meta that can just get killed straight up in these lanes. Rocket Barrage is something to fear for sure. Especially when you're coupled up with the likes of a Crystal Maiden that can apply a bunch of pressure and also give you mana. Yep. It's a very, very strong duel. That's what... Feels a bit like what Maiden Jugger used to be back when Jugger oh, was a Jugger. thing. Yeah. But Sad days for him. F's in the chat for Jugs. Yeah. Back when it was all 
a lot of melee offlaners, but Jugger's Blade Fury was way better, especially on level 2. Maiden Jug was a classic, but we have not seen that. It feels like for years by now, actually. It's been yeah. a long time since Jug was a, a big deal. Pango gonna TP bottom with the haste here. Malreen has big plans to connect with Skitter, as well as Snaking, and they yeah. will definitely oh, kill me arrow here. Coming for him. And that is an easy, easy cleanup. Skeeter gets credit. And he's having uh, quite the game so far. Malreen's still working on that defusal. You can see his net worth. He's about 800 behind GPK on the timber. So, see how much pressure GPK can apply. Still, the lead in general is Falcons, with especially the Doom discrepancy over the offlane Kunkka, that has really... Betboom specifically avoided the Timbersaw matchup, but then they picked Kunkka, who is also not going to enjoy this lane very much. Save. They'll take a rolling thunder, shield crash to follow, but uh, uh, yeah, it comes out early, that, thinking that. he can finish the job, but it's not to be. The arrow. Oh, okay. X torrent, but not going to be any follow-up. He's definitely playing very passive right now. Despite that kill not happening for Malreen, he's completely zoning the enemy team off the oh, tower. First doom of the game it is applies, applied to Toronto Tokyo. We'll try to live. walk it off as Nightfall forces Amar away. It's okay. Skeeter <laughs> jungling in the enemy triangle. So it, I don't know if they stacked that themselves or if that was a little bit of a steal, but this is obviously what we were talking about. The game largely could be decided in part in this specific area with the stacks. And you're seeing both teams put a lot of emphasis on it where their respective position four slash five. Interesting that Toronto Tokyo has this many stacks. Uh, the crit ones make a lot of sense because he's playing top lane, so he'll generally be around the triangle, which is what you want to stack for the gyro. But the ET oh my. doesn't have access to the triangle as easily. Crit will do two. That is a tasty I believe this treat. Is two quadruples here. That attack. is nice. At least it's a quadruple ancient, right? I think Amar in trouble. Yeah, TP from GPK. Burst! Nice and Amar easy. is dead. So Betboom able to find a couple of nice kills here in the laney stage, but like you said, the, the net worth still leaning in Falcon's favor. Still very early on. To, ooh, that is That's a nice great deal. deal. Yeah. <laughs> Gracious. So I'm not sure if that was a triple or a quadruple, but the relative net worth exchange there when you kill this stack and the enemy team doesn't get it is probably close to like 600. Oh, GPK blinks. That's an early blink for him. Homing missile will hit him eventually, but he is way too far away. So smoke gank unsuccessful for Falcons. Look at that animation. It's good stuff. And then, of course, the dinky dink sound. Always a classic. But that provides some space for the Tier 1 tower, so Falcons won't go empty-handed at the very least from their perspective. Do you actually... Okay, about the homing missile sound, do you think that started out as a joke yes, in beta probably. and then they kept it? Probably. Because, like, it's a missile. You'd think that it's going to have some sort of explosive sound when it connects, right? Yeah. And then they're probably like, oh, we just need some sort of placeholder sound. Wouldn't it be funny if it just sounded like <laughs> a little pellet that hit a frying pan? Yeah. I... And then they just thought, oh, that's actually really funny. Let's keep that. And nobody complained. Everyone yeah. loved it. So, oh, there it is. The other steal coming. Ah, yes, the expected steal from Crystal Freezing Maiden field. and Rubik. Torrent cancels it, but oh, got a lot of goodness. worth out of it. That is so big for Falcons. Yeah. Especially, they didn't oh. even need to commit cores oh. for it. Well, okay. Here we go the other way. <laughs> this is Does anybody want to farm their Central. own specs? Hello? What in the world? Amar, he's going to be wise to this, but they've already stolen basically everything. There's the Doom onto GPK. Oh, it's gonna Valerie cost coming them. with a huge swashbuckle. Gets the shield crash as well. The Rolling Thunder is coming as GPK will be hounded and eventually taken out. And they'll get Toronto Tokyo to boot. So a little bit of punish, but Bet Boom still, that is a massive ancient stack that they stole. It still feels like an overall Falcons win in total, right? They invaded and they stole Ancients too with their supports. It was a smaller stack, but they get the Timber Saw as well as the ET kill, and the they only get to person, push out these waves. The only person crying right now is, uh, is Me in the club. on the gyro. Oh, okay. He didn't get to farm any of it. <laughs> Not true. He's still top net worth, though. Yeah, he's... By he's four gold. Oh, no, now he's number two. And okay, now he's crying.
Okay. Very good. Thank. Keep us up to date on the net worth uh, discrepancy yeah. between He's the behind. Two. He's ahead. Okay. Thank you. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Skitter, top net worth. <laughs> Radiant's bottom Has the chrysalis and point attack. booster halfway to his ags Skitter's already. Skitter's second on net worth. <laughs> okay. You can stop that now. The bit's over. Appreciate it though. Good effort. All right. And we can see both, both position ones, farming away. But as you did mention, Skeeter's now number two in net worth. Yeah. Trying to take the lead here, but he's still second. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, once he gets that Ags, though, I think he'll be first, Cinderin. Yeah. That thing really, That's fair. really Or maybe helps this the creep wave that he's close to <laughs> could be the difference maker here in bottom lane, but why, he's scared. Why were we put on grand final? <laughs> Mistakes were made all around. No, it's perfect. These games are very <laughs> farm heavy, so we get to shoot the shit a lot, you know? That's true. That's that is that is accurate. Nothing's actually happening other than farming. Oh, well, here oh, comes Miro. Miro. Welcome to hell. The boat does cancel the freezing field, but that is a lot of magic damage from Skeeter and company. And Skeeter takes first place with that kill. He's <laughs> back, baby. That's right. And he's staying on top this time. Mark my words. Okay. Not going to relinquish this lead. Yeah, that cleave's not going to help. I fall get back into the, the lead. All right, so all jokes aside, it's a very healthy sign for Gyro that he's keeping up with Sven. It feels like in this tournament, Sven has not been, no no hero has been able to keep up with this guy if he's free farming. You see the 181 CS on Nightfall to the 130 of Skitter. It's just the kills. Like he got so many early kills in this lane. The four that he's got now to his name have really made a big difference. He's gonna go through the gate and try to take some of the top half of the map away as well from the side of Betboom. You know what, Hero feels like it's dropped off a bit, even though I think it's really effective against the Timbersaw. And the fact it was picked against Timbersaw many a time early in the tournament and the tournament before is the Luna. Yeah. Uh, but we're not seeing it nearly as often. I think Falcons are very hesitant to pick Luna because they've run into... I mean, they had the Lifestealer game yesterday, but they could have banned that because they closed the first phase anyway. Um, but you're right. I, in a way, you could have maybe picked Luna's their Gyro, but it doesn't have the flex. And I guess it's also a little bit more... How to say, it's a little bit more dependent on your other heroes and your strategy. I think when you run Gyro, if you just have a good, you know, a good stable lane support, you're going to work with most stuff that Falcons want to run. Yeah. Luna may be a little bit more specific to seeing more information in the game, and also especially what the enemy team is running. Gyro can work around most stuff. There's the Doom onto Timber. Absolutely, GPK is dead. Malreen. Not going to go for another kill because they find save in the jungle. The freezing fields have been really good this game. It's the third one already. As the call down actually will not hit, but save still cleaned up by Malreen. And now the lead has grown to 5k as Nightfall looks like he might want to fight despite being down two members right now. Okay, thinks better of it. Finally counts one to five. Is he going to pop? His ult to farm this one ancient stack. Not Amar even a stack. So Amar strong right will now. continue with the Shivas. As Toronto Tokyo is the one that will tank most of the damage. So God Strength used, and then he's going to try to get this other ancient. I feel like these two Doom picks that Falcons have done in this grand final so far has just been flat out game winning, both of them. Like this one, he's ruining the Timber Sauce game, who had such a good start. GPK is now down to fifth on net worth. Mm. And. With the lanes that he's getting on Amar, he's just getting this fast Shiva, and I think one of the things that sets Falcons apart the most from other teams in this tournament is how good they are at obtaining vision through heroes. Like, Amar just walks in. Save. He trusts his teammates, doesn't give a crap. Yeah, he's tanking a lot. GPK on the sideline. You can see Amar not willing to go too deep there. But that's what you can do when you have a farm doom like this in this game, is you can just frontline. You just walk in with your Shivas popped, you get all the vision. If the enemy team turns on you, your teammates get to have a free fight with the Pango and oh. the Gyro. He's gonna get ganked here this time. time. He's alone. He is completely all the mines placed from save. Look how tanky he is though. Eventually they do find the kill. Bet boom. Nice Getting revenge there for GPK. Finally. Feels like this game was slipping away. It's still not looking great. We don't have the best track record for Sven being down 5k minute 18. This is a win more hero. You want to be ahead and then you just keep building and building and building. And in comparison to the Sven from Falcons last game where they were in a much better position than this. Yeah, we got the boat. Caught. It's coming. And the blast off is there. It's not Echo enough yet. to follow. Crit eventually taken out by the Chakram. 
They have a lot of long range poke for sure on yeah. Bet Boom's side. They got there eventually. Falcons not responding with their Doom dead. They weren't really interested in trying to take this fight and Bet Boom get a little extra. So, trying to keep the ball rolling off this momentum. Now, Doom is ready again. So, what'll it be? Amar. Oh, nice and ball. snaking. Oh, this is a very oh unexpected boy. move for him. He has no idea. Oh boy, the Scorched Earth. He feels it. He gets doomed. Freezing field to follow. Oh boy. And they can just leave him. To yeah, absolutely. Him. Knowing that it is not, you cannot deny. What do you think about that, by the way? You can't deny anymore. And now I, that you can't with Poison Touch. That was the trade-off. Yeah. Guess. You can only have three in the game, I, I guess. I don't know. I like denies. I miss denying myself on Pudge. I tell you, I miss denying myself on Centaur. That's really old school. But. Oh yeah, that's true. You actually used to be I able to. I love that. Is so long ago. Yeah, but I'm that old. was a that was a bit of a <laughs> double-edged sword though, because yeah, sometimes, exactly. sometimes you didn't want to. Yeah, that's the whole point. It's a double edge. Of course, yeah. it should hurt. That's fair. That I, boom. I think Retreat. it was largely considered a buff to the hero that you didn't kill yourself with double edge, because a lot of the time in fights you would, yeah, you know, finish off the oh, hero. Okay, they find crit. In their jungle, he is eventually going to get taken out. Malreen with a response. Yes, rolling thunder activated. Amar coming in with the Shivas. Does not have Doom yet, as the boat is coming for him. And Malreen getting some nice connections. The Swash is enough to finish off save. Torrent Storm is there as Nightfall focusing all his efforts onto Amar. And they should have the damage to rip through him. Indeed, they do. And now Very Speeder, ooh. Okay, no Timber Chain, but they have the X. This is he a doesn't huge have BKB kill. this time. We'll have to try to fight his way out of this 1v4. It is not to be as Bet Boom getting some valuable kills. That is so huge for them. Swinging back in a big way. We've now got GPK at the top of the charts. Sven is also going to overtake Gyro. So now the power dynamic is going to change quite significantly. You're also starting to... Miero, who's had a terrible game, is actually going places now. Has that Torrent Storm up and running. Starting to work on the BKB. He's still way behind every other core in the game, but definitely is recoverable at this rate. And I wonder what Falcon's ad adjustment is going to be. I feel like they're going to chill until they get the next two BKBs. I think they just want to farm, get Gyro his BKB, get Doom his, and then look for the next move. Because if there's one thing Bet Boom's lineup doesn't deal with very well, it's BKB. They actually have a terrible lineup against it, in my opinion. The only thing you have is Sven hitting, but he can't stick on his targets if they're just BKB. They're just going to be able to kite him. And they can effectively, when they get the BKBs, they can choose to just doom Sven over Timber. And use the BKB duration to ignore Timber and then clean house after. Falcons will now go for Roche. No God Strength. Bet Boom on the opposite side of the map will not make it here in time. Okay, Bet Boom. Did they get every Roche last game or was. Yeah. It did they get every single one? I believe so, yeah. Falcons, like we talked about, usually the ones are, or usually are the ones to take Roche and have the Aegis advantage throughout the majority of these games that they've played in the last couple tournaments. That's Light Collector, Cinderin. Oh, Light Collector for Doom. Amar is actually very lucky with the Light Collectors. Gets it every game, it seems. And he's going to work on his BKB, like you said. Uh, the Gyro. A recipe away for his BKB. And of course, Pango doesn't need one because of the ult, but is halfway to his Ags for Malreen. Three Whispers of the Dread as well. This one. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, Timber saw it. Very good on him. Yeah. Techies too. Is is under attack. But and no, Elder even Titan. Night Vision suffers. Elder Titan got the Gossamer Cape, which the the evasion here is not particularly interesting, but he didn't get Light Collector offered clearly, <laughs> so he will take the other move speed item. <laughs> yeah. On fair. that hero. That's good. Unfortunate. Sometimes Radiant you just low roll. Yeah, it's torming the time for the side of Falcons. Oh Looks like at least they're grouping through. Oh, is this a smoke instead? I, don't know. I think they will. They kind of seem a bit indecisive about whether they can kill it or not. Snaking's pinging it. Yeah, they're going to try. They will go now. Let's see if Crit and Snaking can survive this encounter. Crit this is... will back away. Meanwhile, Malreen gets caught off guard and brought down. Snaking, you got to run. Can Skeeter finish it himself? Oh, that, like that, that was the a reason they were hesitating. That was really close, <laughs> actually. Yeah. Whereas this one is a slam dunk easy take for Bet Boom with five heroes, of course. 
They will get the shard onto their techies. Falcon's got crystal, crystal clone. clone. Yeah, nice. That's a good way to say it. It's funny when they add these shards, a lot of times they're just so bad. And then patch after patch is a little buff here, little buff there. Like yep. after three in a row, they're not a meme anymore. Yep. Crystal Clone quite good. Even Glacier. I mean, the Ice Spell is getting lots of buffs lately. Of course, we're not seeing Drow. Has nothing to do with Glacier, though. S tier, of course. And then you have the opposite case where some items get added in a, in a version and the players are just slow to pick up on it. Like... Yeah, that's true. The Light Collector... <laughs> Here we go again. Yeah. Can you go one minute without talking about Light Collector? I'll try. Please. Right. What is it now? 2421. Okay. Right. Light Collector on Doom? <laughs> Get no, to see it there. there. All right, Perfect. shit. 2427. <laughs> I was going to elaborate, but now I'm not. Yeah, I was going to say you were talking, and then uh, you just stopped Stop. suddenly. Much to everyone's... Uh, Joy. As Skeeter and company are smoked now. Only with this God, 2K it's only lead. been 20 seconds. I'm getting <laughs> withdrawal symptoms. See, I can't even speak. It's symptoms. It's yeah, you're just having a stroke. Uh. That's perfectly normal for a grand finals. Is Toronto, Tokyo, and save gonna attempt to defend? Is this astral spirit? Let's see if it ends up hitting anyone. Not yet. Oh. Okay. It did hit snaking. So I think that yeah. will indicate that the rest of Falcons are shadowing Skeeter. Two minutes on the Aegis. Yeah, they want to put it to use here, of course, so we'll go here. He's, the whole team is covering him, including Doom with the Light Collector. <laughs> Feeling very strong here. Yep. Something tells me that thing's going to get so nerfed that you'll never have to say it again. <laughs> I don't know about that, but it's definitely getting nerfed. Uh, Lacoste actually had a very good idea for a nerf, which was that it kind of breaks like Tranquil Boots. So if you take damage, the effects are halved, for example, for three seconds. So that means you don't get the full efficiency if you're like jungling, you lose some of the regen, and if you're fighting, you lose the regen as well as the move speed. I, I like my be idea better. Interesting so idea. What was your idea again? The move speed is at night. The regen is in the day. Yeah. Both regens. And then you keep the values the same? Uh, you might need to tweak them a bit, but yeah, similar. <laughs> eh. top top yep. Is under attack. You'll see. Unsurprisingly, the cost idea is clearly better. You'll see. Tier 2 tower. Will be Skeeters, so no defense mounted from Bet Boom again. Yep, they're just waiting out this Aegis. It is a really big advantage. This Gyro is a very good Aegis carrier. Much, much better than Sven. So yeah, for they sure. recognize that this power level of the Falcons lineup is not something they want to mess with. They'll give up a little bit of ground to avoid a disastrous fight. Now, with it expiring soon, do Bet Boom have a clear call to go? Is the question. Timber. Has this 8 second BKB still, the Sven has 9. Obviously still susceptible to getting doomed, but there's the Kunkka BKB as well. This does feel like a pretty good time for Betboom to try to strike. Age is out in 20, and they do seem to be congregating around that mid lane to maybe go for a smoke, but ET a little bit far behind, and he's uh, actually the one carrying the smoke. Oh, Techies has one too, so they could have, but yeah, they would definitely want to do this as 5. And Skitter's Aegis will now fade. Still so farming the stacks. They get uh, all but one tier two tower during this Aegis. Yeah, it's quite good. Getting a nice juicy stack. The Satanic will be next. And then I would assume the Daedalus to follow. Oh, this is a big find, by the way. The Defiant Shell on Sven. God tier item on this hero. You get that extra swing if anybody attacks you. Major damage increase, especially in the man fights that could be coming up against the gyro. Yeah, I mean, gyro can't even control whether he's auto attacking because of the ags. So True. That's could a good be very point. Very valuable. He will be activating it all the time. Ogre Seal Totem for Amar, also noteworthy. Radiant Snaking. Oh, he pops the smoke. Four staffs to safety. Amar looking for an opening. Blinks into oh, the fray, but stun. he gets stunned instantly by Nightfall. Pops that BKB. Trying to go to work on someone. Skeeter's taking some good damage. Pops the BKB of his own. Now tries to run away. Thinking about going back in. Oh, is that a stolen X? Bet Boom on the high ground. Oh, I really thought they were going to go for the Blink Doom there, but probably feel like Bet Boom has too much of a wow. superior positioning. Not often do you see all 10 heroes basically colliding there and zero die. Yeah. And now that the Ags is online for Malarine, his damage output will uh, be huge. Some really good restraint there from Falcons to not go for that when they get the X mark. Dying. Amar could have definitely blink doomed the Timber, but I kind of agree. This would have ended really poorly. Timber is likely to get 
up to the high ground there, and you could be running into mines. You're running into ET in like this very yeah, tight spot. Say, it's, he's he's it's been tough. very in these two games. He's been very patient with the Doom. Yeah, he's waiting for the right opportunity. I feel like the Doom in a lot of the games earlier in the tournament have been a bit underwhelming after the nerfs, and just not the case on the Falcon side at least. Of course, this is one of the big reasons that Techies is being picked by Betboom consistently. Not only is save just God here, but the hero itself, just so much control over the map. Even when you're behind, just in these little crevices, give some vision, give some idea that the enemies are there. So we might have a collision now. Miero looking for the opening. We'll get glimmered. Oh, sticky bomb onto Mallory. He's going to roll up, though. Amar gets off the Shivas. Looks like he's trying to run away as Mallory buys some space. As the X, is that going to last long enough? Uh, looks like Amar gets away with the BKB TP, and Malreen also disengages. Completely clean exit there. They have the gyro bottom, so they were not interested in taking this fight. Falcons and they oh, won't have the gate. to. Now gating down, yeah, Skater is already out. It's just really, really clean map movements from Falcons. They're doing such a good job. Not this is the one team that you look at and you're like, do they have vision? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, it's do they have the same crazy. vision as us somehow? It's ridiculous. Uh, very, very aware of the map. Mar opting to go for the Octarine on the Doom. And Nightfall. The Daedalus almost there. A 7k lead. You can't, I mean, you can ascribe some of it to Devour, but Falcons are just more efficient. They're getting more out of the map. And I think it's interesting to see how, when you when you think back on the entire tournament, this was one of the big ups that Betboom have over a lot of other teams, was their efficiency and their movements on the map. There's just this one team in the tournament that does it better. And obviously, shocker, they're the ones they're going to be facing in the finals, but... It, it, it's got to be frustrating for Betboom when all of the stuff that you've done in every other game, more or less, that generally works, just you're just not finding anything. This last game, you got eight kills. In this game, you have nine. And every failed move you make is money down the drain where Falcons is just being more efficient, farming around the map. So they keep building this lead. Falcons will try to contest this Roche Pit area 30 seconds until... Yep, they scan. The grand return. I know Bedboom is here. They have a nice setup. This is where Techies gets really scary once he can have some time to set up these mines. Smoke now from Bedboom's side. Yeah, Falcon should be moments away from using one of them. Not only Techies, the Elder Titan as well. Very scary to fight into. Yep. They're actually moving around. They find Amar on the other side of the tree line. He's actually completely isolated from his team, trying to go for the backstab. Blinks to the oh, south. No the Sheila's for vision, but nobody's in the pit. Instead, he's going to get gone on now. Blast off connects. Stormhammer as well as the ET ult comes out. Decimates him, but he actually buys back instantly as Malreen. The nice rolling thunder. Boat not being used to much effect as Betboom now. Trying to run away, Toronto Toki in the pit gets denied by Roche. He's not happy that somebody's entered his pit. He buys back now as Malreen actually scouts him out on the backside. Miero very low already as the boat is stolen. Skeeter, you can see the BKB popped as the Doom applied to the Timber Saw. The Yules is actually going to cancel the TP. And it looks like he's going to get cleaned up eventually, so GPK does die. And now the chase is on, and they're going to be able to surround Nightfall. He goes down as the stolen boat overhead. Toronto, Tokyo, and company have to try to get out. Only two of them alive, just two supports for Bet Boom. And he's just going to get chased down by Amar, relentless on this Doom. One Centaur stomp, more Infernal Blades, lots of high fives, and Toronto, Tokyo eventually dies. And now the pit is all Falcons. It's just Falcons 101. The way this entire fart, fight starts, fart. Oh, that's, that's, now that's a Jenkins joke. Go yeah. ahead. The way this fight starts, the Doom specifically is trying to backstab them. This is like a... It can't really go wrong for Amar, right? Either he gets tons of information and they commit key spells to killing him, he insta buys back and TP's back, or he's going to find them and get the jump. So it's like, it's fail-safe. They, because the Roche is bottom and they have that contact point, he's very confident to wrap around. And this entire fight is decided by what happens in the first five seconds. Doom forces out spells, buys back, and he pulls the fight down into the corner where... Pango is insane there. You get Skitter, who gets to just flack the entire team, and Doom's death is completely irrelevant. He's just back after five seconds. 
getting the doom on the timber. It's yeah. just so so. It's so easy and so hard at the same time. That's why it's so cool to watch. Because when you see them do it, they make it look easy. But if you're in that position yourself, it's definitely not the most obvious way to play it. But I really love the way they're setting these things up. Yeah, they had a huge team fart win. Yep. Nice. Into <laughs> the Tormi. You waited 20 <laughs> seconds for me to finish my You sentence. wouldn't stop talking, uh, as always. <laughs> Skeeter gets the shard, surprisingly enough. Okay. Not exactly a core type shard, but he'll take it. As the lead now, 13k at Bed Boom. Need to find a way back in this game. Because, I mean, it is a best of five, so there's still plenty of games potentially, but down 0 2 is really tough. Especially when Falcons are showing the edge of just grabbing first pick gyro, which is something you haven't had to play against at all for like the last 20 games. Yeah. When they do that in the second game and you're still struggling to solve it, it just means that they have a bigger toolbox. Um, Bet Boom are running a lot of their same stuff and the ideas just aren't really working. It's not coming together. Now Skitter is borderline unkillable. He's huge. He's got the Satanic and the Aegis, and we, we've seen how Bet Boom's fights work. It's pop BKBs, it's get in there and try to get the kills quickly. Once the BKBs fade, Pango's gonna pop off, Doom is gonna pop off. I'll re yeah. Thought he had a read. Not gonna find anyone. Oh, kill the wave, I am sure. He has Arcane Rune, so this is a very minor commitment. The ult. Kills some creeps right in front of Skeeter. Skeeter not happy with that. Uh, I'll point out very Am angry. Amar with the Ogre Seal Totem is still choosing to use Light Collector. Oh, there you go. Yeah, it's been a while since you mentioned he used, that item. He used it to great effectiveness in the last fight, the Seal Totem. But Radiant when nothing is happening, you just got to go fast. You know, he's probably going to swap it in here in the anticipation of a fight. Yep, Amar leading the way. Stormhammer onto Snake and gets deleted. Amar has to pop his BKB in retreat. Call down. Use as kind of a zoning mechanism for oh the side of Falcons. Toronto Tokyo taking so much damage as Skeeter is just leading the way. They don't want to go on him, but look at the homing missile. The shard actually comes in handy. Amar gets off the Doom onto GPK, but he's all alone. This is a 4v1 scenario, and Falcons, will they actually connect? It doesn't look like it. He'll live for it because of the Doom. That should help. And everybody's going to TP out for Bet Boom. Skeeter, untouchable. And he's going to be going for the butterfly next. Yeah. In and anticipation, Bet Boom yeah. will prepare an MKB on their Sven, which never feels great, but you just got to do it here. Skitter is going to become way too big of a problem for them. It all, he already is, but it can get worse than this. Mar that was close. Fishing. Won't find anyone. Speaking of him, he's working on his next item as well. Octarine is very close, and then it's into the Refresher. Oh, Malreen. Oh, blinks away. Nice timing. Gets X, though. Has to roll up into his ult if he needs, and let's just get out. He will use it. Gonna try to hound Miero a bit. Uses the defusal. <laughs> Gets a random bash on Techies. <laughs> just in a drive-by. Skeeter is in the base. Tier 3 tower looks to be his. The fortification will delay it. 35 second Aegis? Does yeah. he stay? It's close, and Probably the Butterfly not. is really close as well. This GPK, again, the ADHD just taking over. Really wants to deny that tower, but probably not. The GPKD. <laughs> yep. Kicking in, getting impatient, wants something to happen, but every time Bet Boom tries, they've found a little bit here and there in the last few. Engages like they burst the CM, but Falcons just don't give you collateral. They're not giving you a big enough win. Hey, look at this. The, yeah, they're holding on to the Roshan's banner. You Citroen. just can't stop talking about it, can you? A, you it's the first time I brought it up, as yeah. opposed to your 10 light collectors. That was the joke. I thought it was a pretty good one. Light collector on Doom. Okay. Ready. Roche's banner ready to go I for guess, Snake King. So how do you think he's going to use this? Are they waiting until they take their first lane, or is he going to incorporate it as part of the next Roche uh, Aegis push? I think he's trying to combine the banners. He saw how effective hmm. that was uh, for gaming oh, gladiators. This is, this is really big, actually, getting this rune right now on Skitter. Yep. 
Gyro, it's probably cool. one of the best carries to get this new double damage on. Yeah, you have so both. much magic damage. It's true. Oh, he is uh, ginormous. I mean, he's going to pop this and swap in his BKB and just absolutely go to town. They're actually going to high ground because of this, I think. Yeah, you Doesn't don't need, need the Aegis. Jinx, you can't say Light Collector ever again. That's not how that works. Yep. Fuck. They are smoked up. <laughs> They're smoked up. As they will approach for this tower kill. Well, he pops the rune and chills. Oh, yeah, he did pop it. Okay. Just All right, needs, here we uh, go. Advancing. All right, one casual right click. Tower is dead. Mine's being placed, so... Falcons, if they try to dive, they could get punished, but Malreen, okay, save actually goes in for the initiates and gets bashed up by Malreen. Very unlucky for him. And now GPK all alone. No one wants to join him. He gets doomed and destroyed. And Skeeter still applying a lot of pressure to these barracks. Well, the tidal wave brings him back in, pops the BKB to avoid the storm hammer. Now the call down is there. They have the bashes as well onto Nifos. He's already at half HP, applying some pressure. It looks like that will be the death of Amar at the very least. And now Skeeter and company on the run. Nightfall want to find a connection. Will do so on Skeeter. The Satanic is not going to help him here. Even the freezing field being expended, but it's not enough. So Falcons completely punished as Bet Boom will get another kill onto Crit. A nice X from Miero. And Tidal Wave brings him to his knees. That required two buybacks from Bet Boom, but yep. still a really good hold. That's a great result for them. And it just it makes the world of difference that Amar just gets burst like this. So they're obviously they're using the Doom in the initial engagement and his BKB. So Amar's fight is over now. Like he should actually just not be coming back in, I think, at at this point. But he will go for the reinitiation here after Skitter gets opened upon, and that punish is instant from Yero. He identifies immediately, okay, I can X the Doom here, and we just blast him with buybacks. And Skidder, having used the BKB in the initial fight there, won't have it to disengage with, and they will turn and kill him off. Satanic was one second uh, from no. being ready. Could have perhaps stood his ground a little bit, but I don't think he has a chance of surviving that. I doubt so. it. All right, so Bet Boom. Uh, I mean, it's still a 10k lead, but that definitely opens the door. That is the face of somebody who learned never go high ground. Yep, this patch is something else, I'll tell you what. As Miero picks up the Octarine, Roche is 30 seconds away, which is good news for Falcons. It is really rare in this tournament that we see a team try to high ground without an Aegis. Yes, So they, they felt that strong. They got tempted because of the rune. There is no way they go for that high ground siege without that rune on Skitter. But he felt like, I can do this, I'm invincible, but... You know, the rune is timed. You don't have it the whole time. Bet Boom waited out, and they follow up and, and clean house with some nice buybacks. So it's not like it came for free, and Falcons are still in a great position, but they they were doing better before that push, that's for sure. They were up like 16,000. Now it's down to 11, turn to 13 with the Tormentor kill. Amar will get the shard. Satanic on the way for Nightfall, only a few hundred away from that one. What do you think of the Doom Shard? That's the healing on Scorched Earth. It's The old one was really good. The Infernal Blade extra yeah. stun was very strong. Yeah, it was crazy good. I think this one is its okay sometimes. I think it's very specific. Yeah, it sounds underwhelming, and it's hard to notice, obviously, in these big team fights. But this is very big for Bed Boom to get this for free. Absolutely. How come Falcons aren't contesting this, actually? They have the buyback advantage. It's on the Radiant side, and... They had all their spells ready. Huh. That's peculiar. That's actually a really big moment here for Bet Boom to just get that freely. Because if they contest that fight and Falcons do, like, tie it, they probably get racks, right? Because they just have an advantage from the previous fight having the buybacks that it did expended by Bet Boom. And now you buy a lot of time to stabilize the game. Did they use the... They used the banner top. God damn. They used it outside of the base, though. They used I don't, it close I to the don't care. Okay. Techie's mind set up. Very sorry for bringing it up, Shannon. Falcons. Just so angry. <laughs> okay. On to the high ground. Pushing into Aegis. Yeah. Well, the god strength is down, so... Yeah. Bed boom. They're trying to pull one on them. They might actually just get this lane. Yeah, I think they will. Fortification is popped, though. Tidal wave brings Skeeter a little bit farther back as Malorine finds the connection onto GPK. This is the Aegis target, though. 
As you can see, the Axe still doing some work as Amar pops the BKB, gets the Doom off. That was on the Conquer, though. He's just going to run away, though. Looks like he's A-OK. -okay. And now Amar might get punished as the Stormhammer will come for him. And they're actually going to try to fight this out, it looks like, as Malarin gets off the second ult now. That's the Aegis down. Nightfall waited long enough that his God Strength is up. He's going to get Telekinesis, though. And he's going to go for the killing blow onto the Rubik, and he gets it. Double kill for Nightfall. But Skeeter is just doing so much damage. Holy shit. That is a dead spend for 90 seconds. This is how Skeeter should be able to finish this Rex, although that is backdoor protection. Ultra kill for Malreen. He's the one actually netting himself the kills. As GPK is going to get stunned up. The shield crashes Dale. Swatch is actually going to miss because of the Yules. There's another bash to come out. That's going to be the set of racks now in favor of Falcons. Malreen wants this Rampage. Is he going to get it? Echo uh, Stop is going to be missed. He's going to use Roll Up for some reason to get the Basher up again. Swash again. It's not the Rampage. It should have been a double, though. He <laughs> dies to the Falcons. Oh, my God. The greed. It's <laughs> so greedy. Greedy boy. He wanted the ET kill as well. He actually had the clean timber kill and a full-on disengage. And he got bloodthirsty. <laughs> His oh team's like, you God. idiot. <laughs> that is. <laughs> and he's going to buy back. Oh, my. Really? His team is laughing at wow. him. They're like, Malreen, what are you doing diving the fountain? He's well, like, fuck you guys. I'm going back in. <laughs> they don't have buybacks on yep. Bet Boom. I don't know if they know this, but I, this will not be punished, it looks like. This should be two sets at the very least. I mean, I don't know how much Malreen's helping with the push exactly. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I mean, I guess he offers some protection for Skitter in case of buybacks from the enemy team. Yeah, Lamar. Oh, he's shadowing them right now as well. X onto Skeeter. Into the torrent. Into the boat as well. His BKB is now up in the Satanic as well as Malreen gets a nice stun connection onto Miero, but just buying some time. Spends up in eight seconds. Does Skeeter actually want to continue here? They're going to get the tower pretty easily. They're going to try to go for the Megas here. They know that Timbersaw... If he would have bought back by now if he had it. 50 seconds of no GPK. Five versus four. Blast off hits. The gyro already at half HP. Stormhammer coming in. Very long distance. Nightfall. He gets the kill onto the gyro, who buys back instantly. That's the AoE doom for Mamar. It's not going to matter. He dies. Torrent Storm to follow to delay this. That's a buyback, like he said, onto the gyrocopter. They want to finish this. They want to get the Mega Creeps now. Torrent Storm comes out. Tidal Wave as well. As Skeeter will get the range. The Nightfall, he's going to have to fight. They want to save these racks, but Malreen goes in really deep with the Rolling Thunder, and that will secure the Mega Creeps for Falcons. Finding the connection again onto this Konka, 12 seconds away from GPK. I believe they're going to try to run away, but Skeeter might have to just BKB TP. Doesn't have the TP, though, so we'll just run. As Falcons at a major advantage now. Yeah, they outlast. Can do from here. They outlast all of Sven's stuff. What, at what is that this point. Midas? <laughs> what? Wait. Why? Doom but a Midas. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Thirty-five minutes slower than average. <laughs> oh my god. What the? F <laughs> what am I watching? <laughs> and I, I'm, I'm pretty sure he had buyback. So he bought a Midas and now does not have buyback. Turning into a pub game, he saw Marine's buyback. He's yeah. like, okay, dude, you're going to buy it back? I'll buy Midas. Watch me. I'll break my items. I'll run down mid and break my items. Yeah, well, let's... I mean, this is, this is throwable, funny. I will say. Yeah, they could lose. I mean, it's the only way they really lose this is if, is if Gyro gets caught. I think Skidder can play this very safe. He's more or less maxed out. They have a major have buyback, advantage. Though, right? so. Yeah, that's why. So he needs to just be careful not to get caught. We've seen how Falcons can win fights on offense. Imagine their lineup in their own base. Like, it's so Radiant difficult for Bet Boom to pierce this defense. So. That's an Eon disc down for a bit for Malreen. Yeah, it was a nice fight back. from Bet Boom, to be honest. They isolated and killed the Gyro early before he got BKB or Satanic off. He just had the buyback and the ability to connect back with his team. Gotta say it. No, this is not particularly relevant right now. It's just been noticing when Snaking gets this shard on Maiden, he, you find so much farm with this. Yeah. Just go into the jungle, you pay 50 mana to kill a camp. What shall I make? This Frostbite obviously lasts really long on the creeps. This spell is way better than Frostbite, and it costs a third of it. <laughs> it's that's, quite funny. That's true. You're obviously paying a lot of gold for it, but if you get it for free... 
Nice. I'm surprised. Oh, the attack going... speed, Shannon. You love it. <laughs> Did he actually go for it? Oh, it's popping boy. off. So why are you buying Glimmer Cape? Get a Daedalus. Do something cool. It's getting the attack speed talent so that he can give Timber max stacks <laughs> as fast as possible. All right. 30, really good win rate. 31% pick. That is shocking. 88% win rate. Stats don't lie, Shannon. You use this to destroy <laughs> Techie's mines. Okay, sure. <laughs> and to farm. To deal extra damage. To look cool. To get street cred. Street cred worth how, way more 39 than winning the percent, tournament. How many of the... I mean, that's from... That's not from pro matches, is it? Is it just pro matches? Yes. That 39... Per, that seems really high. Oh. I like to see it, though. The greed. Look at it. Oh, yeah. Pew, pew. Imagine a Maelstrom, though. Yeah. The Glimmer's not really going to help him. <laughs> uh, such a novelty. I love it. It's a real morale booster. You feel so strong. That's true. And you have the Boots of Bearing as well. All right, the smoke from Bet Boom. They pushed out their lanes a decent amount. I mean, the top lane is coming in, though. As Amar will not be their target. I feel like, yeah, they're just going for like a blind initiation, just hoping someone is on the path. Crit might be the one. Smoke breaks. Crit is spotted. x up. So, yeah. And eventually dead. They even use the Torrent Storm just in case there's anybody else nearby. That's all they get, though. Oh, that was the uh, Torrent Storm Rubik's from own. Rubik. Okay. That is a good steal. So 13k lead for Falcons, but that doesn't really tell the story. It's not that massive. It's more so the, the Mega Creeps on their side, which, yeah. I mean, should secure this next Roche, which spawns in, it's a late one, two minutes. And from, I mean, do you think Bet Boom needs to try to, I mean, tell me what they do. Give me a plan of action. Well, I would have said the plan of action should be to try to find and blast the gyro, but that kind of feels like what they just did, but ran into the Rubik. They obviously understand that if they can kill Skitter within the next two minutes and not have buyback on him, they could open up for a counter raxing, but at this point it's starting to look really unlikely they get him in time, as they have to handle the base a lot. Falcons have had good hero placements around the map. So... Let's say it comes down to the next Roche. I think you have to fight for it. I don't think you can give up that to Falcons and let them go in with a Gyro Aegis and start hitting your tier fours. I think that's just too difficult. So, gotta be kind of some sort of an all-in. It's good news for Toronto Tokyo that he does have the cleave. That How is he 23? <laughs> definitely helps with this problem. This hero actually pushes waves very well with the 100% cleave talent. Imagine that on some other heroes in Dota. That would be quite something. Yep. Does Wraith King still have his? That's a good question. I actually don't remember. I was shocked that we've look. had five games of Wraith King in this tournament. Yeah, it was it was five games by Falcons. Yeah. I, I don't know if we they were the only ones to play it. We've been casting them a lot. He has 35% cleave on level 20. Elder Perfect. Titan has 100%. <laughs> yeah, quite the difference. Yeah, Crystal Main has 225 attack speed. Now, imagine getting that on Sven as a talent. That would be... Yep, the game is, you know, balanced around different things. There was a theory that Crystal Maiden Core was going to become a thing because of this talent. It never really caught on. So I think we need to buff it to 350 attack speed. Yep. I mean, there's a there's a point where it becomes good, of course. Yeah. I mean, the, the techies, does he still have the damage? I think it's 251, I want to say, at 25. 252. Two? They Sorry buffed it that. by one. That's right. Forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> the dumbest change of all time. <laughs> Have you seen the late game techies though that right clicks? No, it's one thing to right click, but buffing it from 251 to 252 oh. is obviously just a joke and yeah, completely irrelevant. It's because people love to meme on Valve with the minus one armor. It's yeah. one of the classic memes, but that is infinitely more impactful than getting one damage on techies. Uh, the one armor changes are actually very massive, but people love to joke about it. But it pushes win rates by one to two percent a lot of the time for a hero to lose one armor. Well, we got Roche. They did time not for contest Falcon. it. So yeah. here we go. How on earth are Bet Boom going to handle this fight? That like, is a good question. You, the problem you face is you have to pop everything to kill Gyro the first time, and you have to go on him or your base is gone. So 
You're gonna pop your stuff, you're gonna jump the gyro with your Sven and his BKB and everything. Why did I see it's AoE gonna... Doom before? He doesn't have Ags. Uh, he was that reflection from Lotus Yeah, he or doomed the Sven and Sven had Lotus and Sven had Ags. <laughs> That's so funny. So... <laughs> All right. Yeah, it was a bit of a confusing situation, but oh, it doesn't really matter. Miero's going to be spotted. Amar, Malrin going in with Rolling Thunder, finds the connection. And more importantly, the banner is placed high ground. He's trying to defend here. The Lotus applied, but the Doom is already used on Miero. Infernal Blade to follow. He's dead. Does have buyback, though. Malrin, that's ult number one, trying to get rid of some of these mines. This is an Success offensive doing banner, so. Shannon. It's Radiant. That's a Radiant banner? It's a Radiant banner. Really? Yeah. Damn. It's got a red... Oh, it's, it's died to the creeps! You must protect the banner, for God's sake! Why did you put it there, then? <laughs> Why? <laughs> Good Lord! It had a green health bar. Just put it down under the stairs, then! God! I think maybe if you place it a little bit... Maybe it was close enough to hit both lanes. Can you hit both mid and bottom if you're placing the enemy base when they, like, converge? Uh, I think maybe. The, the AoE is quite small. Yeah. Maybe not. That will get buffed. Maybe sure. they were placing it as a distraction, but they didn't communicate within the team that they haven't. Oh, that's an, that's the mind. other that's banner. Bad yep. yeah. <laughs> I thought they had another try. Yeah, this is when the banner is actually useless. <laughs> when yeah. you're down megas and you don't have a single barracks to your name. All right, here we go again. Yeah, Malrain with another plays. roll. Malrain finds Nightfall. Roll up into the perma stun. Skeeter doing a decent amount of damage. Homing missiles coming for him. He has to pop the BKB. Trying to pop all the pressure now under the gyro. Telekinesis mode. The Aegis goes down, the burst was enough. That's life number one is Malreen trying to create some space again. In that roll up, second rolling thunder as well. He does have refresh on Sven. That was a key timing to get this just before this attack. If they would have hit the base one minute earlier, Nightfall would have not had this item. He just got it, I believe. Or maybe his courier was, he has a lot of gold. Wait, a moment ago he was had, had it in his quick buy. What, what is up what with What did he these? sell? He didn't sell anything. Uh, I actually don't understand how he got this much gold. Oh, I must have missed something. Oh, well. It's well, they hold. It's probably the light collector that got it for him. Oh, that makes sense. So, yeah, they hold. What is up with this tournament? Mega Creeps, suddenly the team that's down takes fights and owns. Okay, well, there is an inherent pretty major advantage to being in your base, and that's usually where fights happen when you have Megas, so... You're fighting around your tier fours. It's also a special case because you have techies. It makes it even easier. <laughs> yeah, I'm safe. Covering the perimeter. It's too bad they don't have anything to heal that tower. Tram protector would be really useful right oh, now. Oh, yeah. Give me that repair kit back, baby. Everybody oh, yeah. loved that stuff. The best tier three item of all time. Or Lich 25 talent. Yeah. Do you think... Heal. Was that the least controversial neutral item removal ever? I think Wrong. nobody liked Repair Kit. Everybody thought it was too I'm sure there's somebody out there. Yeah. You know, there's some sick, sick people oh. in the audience. <laughs> in the audience. <laughs> That's right, in the audience. Yeah. Okay, so Falcons, do they just, <laughs> are they waiting for the next Roche? Time to farm. Because that's going to be Tier 5 time at that point. Yep. And are there some Tier 5 items that make a huge difference one way or the other? Well, we did say at least one of the games in this finals would go over 60. I feel like this one is pretty much a done deal now. You say that, I think you just cursed the game, Cinderin. Oh, well, or I blessed it, depending I mean, on your perspective. That banner is still rotting away in Toronto, Tokyo's inventory. He'll use it when he gets racks in 50 minutes. Okay. All right, here we go. Maybe not. Yep, crit. Telekinesis, offensive usage as Mallory coming with the Rolling Thunder. Toronto Tokyo stunned as well. Save, gets off the blast off. Does end up falling, though. The gem drops to the deck as well as Toronto Tokyo. Not going to get bashed. As Mallory hits a wall, but Blinks still finds Toronto Tokyo. Swash is actually not going to hit him. Shield crash is there as the rest of Betboom now on the run, but on the footsteps of their base is Malreen, the second Rolling Thunder. They take out both supports, they buy back instantly. Nightfall with the God Strength, trying to get something out of this. They're just kiting him right now as the Doom comes out onto Nightfall, has to run away in shame, gets four staff for the time being as Malreen continuing to just be a nuisance. So they force the two buybacks out from the supports of Betboom. And I think now they have to just wait for these refreshers again. Yeah. Malreen is doing so much work. As he didn't even have Ags in his... Wait, he just put it in his backpack now. Okay, yeah, he used a gem. gem here. Yeah, that was a huge, huge win for Falcons in this situation. Having these heroes without buybacks, it's two very vulnerable supports now that 
if you catch either of them, you give yourself a very meaningful advantage going into the fight. Like, killing someone like E.T. is huge in the late game, so... We can very clearly try to target them now, and... Well, Bet Boom aren't gonna wait around. Indeed, Malrain is their target. He gets the roll-up, and the Yundus actually procs as well. Crit, he will likely be the one to fall, but Malrain has oh, always his back up as Amara gets the Doom! On oh, to Nightfall, no. he's dead! Buyback still available and actually did not use his ult at all. As Toronto Toki's getting next on the list, it's triple kill for Amar. They're getting everything that they want, and that's two diebacks on both supports of Bed Boom. And now the rest of the cores will have to fall back to base. They have the buyback on Miero, so it's going to end up being a three versus five as Miero doing some stretches. That That's Malreen. What did I say? Miero. Malreen, yep. He's playing for. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. All right, five versus three. Miero's courier gets killed, so no double torrent storm. That's a pretty big deal. As Skeeter now applying all his pressure to this tier four tower. Stormhammer is in. God strength activated for Nightfall. Tell He's just getting kited again as Malreen with another ult. It feels like he always has this thing up. As GPK tries to use the Yules to get out of dodge, but. The Ancient is just fully exposed as Skeeter is just going to continue to right-click and stand his ground. They take out GPK, he buys back in the game as the Tidal Wave, trying to bring Amar back into the Fountain, but the Ancient is what is really the issue here, as Skeeter will pop the BKB, but the Fortification actually comes out for Bet Boom. Do they have the damage from Skeeter and company? Malreen will continue to get the stuns onto GPK, and this Ancient looks like it's finally going to go down in favor of Falcons as they take Game 2, 11 seconds before those two.